The NBA 2K20 demo is about to drop. And are you confused about what build to make? Does this new My Player Builder have you completely lost on what build to make? Because the build you thought you were gonna make isn't there anymore. The badges you thought you were gonna have don't even exist anymore. Well, you're in luck. This video is for you. Uh, I'm feeling your energy. And shorty, man, she really into me. I got lots of enemies. And they wanna act like they friends with me. I came up from Yo, what's up guys? It is Power D back with another video. Now, before I even start to the video, I used to get to the video really quick, but I just want people I don't want people to be confused when I'm talking about this stuff. So uh, my last video kind of goes over what the my player build is gonna look like in 2K20. If you haven't watched that video, I'm putting the link to it in the description. And also, if you missed any of the new badges that I've been talking about in my old videos, I linked the Google document in the description that's gonna show all the new badges so you can just review really quick so when i'm talking about this stuff you're just not completely confused but this video is going to be all about how to make your player now i'm a person 19 i made my player that i grinded all the way to 99 overall pretty much played primarily on i made that build in the prelude day one of the prelude didn't even think about it so i know how to get these builds right correctly on day one i did the same thing in 2k16 when i grinded all the way to legend 5 i know exactly what builds to make right at the start because there's patterns in 2k so what i wanted to give you is some of these secret strategies that the other youtubers they don't want you to know about because people like 2k likes when you make more builds you give them more money youtubers like when you make multiple builds because you they get more and more views on a new build video to get make this build video they make the next build video then they make the fourth build video it's like you already watched four videos so i'm gonna give you all the tips to get your build right on day one so i'm gonna go over it now the first thing I do want to recommend to people is I'm gonna go over all the things that are really helpful is there's gonna be a change in environment every single year is the game is gonna change but some things are gonna remain the same so I know 2k20 and these builds things it's hard to talk about because we don't know all the details but there are some things that's always 2k that's always basketball so the first thing you're gonna see people do especially a lot of other youtubers they're gonna try to convince you to make the basic builds like they're gonna try to tell you that a pure glass cleaner is gonna be overpowered <laughs> like we've seen what that can do every single year they're gonna try to tell you the simple builds are gonna be overpowered don't fall for that or they're gonna try to tell you to completely switch up what you do if you've been making a point forward every single year or a playmaker every single year don't think you might have to adjust some things you might have to adjust your height you might have to adjust some little small details but don't think okay this year i have to make a slasher you don't have to switch up everything you do but for the people that are confused i have some things that always work so let me get straight into it number one thing that always works shooting builds are always safe good builds and that's just a fact about it i'm just gonna go over when has a stretch ever been bad in 2k just think about it I know the game changes. It's, we've been going through so many different systems and so many different archetypes, but when has the stretch been bad? 19 stretches were good. You had, like I said, you had to switch it from 7-3 to like 7 feet to be really good with it. But stretches were good in 19. Stretches were good in 18. The 7 for 3 stretch. Stretches were good in 17. <laughs> stretches were good in 16. Where they, they didn't have stretches in 16. They didn't have archetypes, but they outsides with the shooting was good um and 15 if you upgrade your shooting all the way you were good so no matter what if you upgrade your shooting especially as a tall player even as a short player when that sharpshooter has been bad sharpshooters were good in 19 they were good in 18 and 17 the speed boosted sharpshooter was probably the best build in the game and 16 same thing upgrade your outside 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 guards were the wave everybody used the outside guard and 15 you had to have your shooting upgraded look at this it's a pattern every single year guys and you see what i'm talking about if you make a shooting build it might not be the best build ever but it's always going to be a good build if you're just confused you're like i really don't know what to make i don't want to mess up my first build just make a build that can shoot and it, it sounds dumb but it's really simple because these builds will always work they're good every single year so shooting builds are safe good builds if you don't know you're confused make a shooting build now the next thing is the tallest speed boosting builds are always good and you're gonna be a little bit confused what do i mean by the tallest speed boosting builds the tallest builds like have that little fast speed boost quick first step thing that they talk about next year is going to be a good build if you talk about if you look at like the 1918 the point forward was that type of build that was really good and 17 i think 610 they could speed boost and that 610 point forward was good in 17 underrated and 16 what people had was the 6 7 outside i think it was 6 8 in your old town you can make it but whatever the tallest was that you could do that speed boost on that was always a good build 
So, at 15, it was the 7 for a small forward because you could speed boost all the way up to the top. And people used to use, if you used to play 15, people used to um, use a 7-3 center that could speed boost because in Old Town, because of the Old Town boost. But anyway, my point is, find whatever, I think they released it on Twitter, some um, information about it. I think it was like 86 ball control or 86 speed with ball you need. Find whatever build that's the tallest that can do that, and that's always going to be a really good build for guards. All right, okay, so the next thing I want to go over is kind of like, this is like what's usually the best guard build, period, is whatever speed boost and build there is that can shoot the best will always be good. Now, this sounds like simple stuff, but these are general principles that go from year to year. So in 19 and 18, the play sharp. So what I mean by that is you can speed boost, but you can also shoot the best. So the play sharp is the build that can speed boost, but it's the best shooting build with it. Because if you did sharp primary, then you're not really going to be able to speed boost consistently. So that play sharp was really good. It took that in 19, 18, and 17. It was it was the same principle, but it was the speed boost and sharp. Because that build could speed boost, but it could also shoot the best. So whatever build could speed boost and shoot the best. So it's been like that every single year. 16, the outside, obviously. So... The 15, it was the, I was like the seven for a small four, like whatever. If you can shoot and you can speed boost, and this goes to my next thing that I want to talk about. If you can sh do more than one thing, that's going to make you the elite builds. So a lot of people make these simple builds in the game and the limited ones. So I'm just going to make like a glass cleaner because I know rebounds in the game. Or I'm going to make, if you can always do two things, you're going to be better than people that can do one thing. So I'll give you an example right quick to show you what I mean. Glass cleaners are never a terrible build, but they're never a good build because they're so limited. They can only do one thing. They can only rebound. So they can't do many things at once. So a glass cleaner wasn't a horrible build, but what's a better build was last year was the sharpshooter rebounder. And why? Because they could shoot and they could rebound. They could do two things. And if you can do two things on, on the court, then you can just, you're so much more useful to your team. That's the thing. So those are the builds that stand out. It's the same thing with guards. So a play sharp, they can dribble and shoot. That's multiple things. That's always gonna be better than like a pure sharp because a pure sharp can only shoot. So if you can start picking builds, try to upgrade, like try to be good at more than one thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Try to be good at, okay, shooting and dribbling or shooting and rebounding or shooting and defense. If you just <laughs> put all your stats in one area and you don't try to be versatile, you're not going to be an elite build. You might be a decent build, but if you want to be a, the best builds in the game, you got to be able to do more than one thing. And to get to that, what I think is builds that were really overpowered last year were post scores, lockdowns, those type of things. I think post scores and lockdowns are going to be good next year, but if you make them only in one area, like if they past the post forward takeover a little bit so it's not going to be the overpowered push animations i don't think pure lockdowns are going to be able to shoot like they were last year i think th those builds will still always be good but they're going to be more limited so try to make them a little bit more versatile this year so make like instead of a pure lockdown type build make like a sharp shooting lockdown type build put some shooting in your build same thing with post scores like try to make it more versatile than it was last year now um after that i still have some more stuff that i want to go over this is some stuff this is some obvious stuff if you made builds before, you should know this. But I'm gonna I'm repeat it for all the people that <laughs> don't really know. So I, I know a lot of people don't know this information. So if you're making a guard in any 2K, you should try to make it low weight. Like I'm not saying minimum weight all the time, but you should try to make it lower towards the lower weight. Like put your weight down. And if you're inside center, put your weight up. Like a post scorer, a glass cleaner, you need to high weight you know what i'm saying maybe usually max weight but i'm not that's kind of like to your discretion you can kind of choose and for your wingspan because this this actually matters because wingspan affects your stats in 20. um if you're a dribbler or a shooter so a main dribbler or a shooter you should try to put your shorter type wingspan because that affects your ball control your three point all of that i don't know about minimum wingspan because that's kind of sketchy with the, how the contest was in 19 but it's the wingspan should be down a little bit if you're choosing your wingspan for dribblers and shooters and it should be longer for defenders and rebounders because you can't have a rebounder with like a tiny midget wingspan you need to be able to rebound you need a long wingspan and for the defenders to be in the passing lanes to get steals so longer wingspan for defenders and rebounders and now if you're trying to do both like if you're trying to be a defender and shooter like i was my build last year i was like a rebounding Spreads. So I was trying to be a rebounder and a shooter. I just put my wingspan in the middle default. So if you're like trying to do both of those, then you have to like kind of balance them, kind of. 
now those are all the things that work very well when choosing your build but i want to go over some things that don't work these are some things that will not work at all so no super short players guys don't go out here because somebody told you and say okay well six foot players are the wave six foot players are never the wave in general you should never make a player under six three the only exception if there's some special ability like the one exception i've ever seen in 2k was the six two speed boost and sharp and that's because they could speed boost and they can shoot so you can take it down one inch but in general you don't want to be making like six one six two six for players but it's just like it's going to put you on such a disadvantage on defense this is not worth whatever offensive boost you may get so try to stay away from this <laughs> the short players below six feet or anything like that okay the next thing is no minimum wingspan they usually doesn't work like okay you can press short wingspan that's okay but when you start going all the way to minimum wingspan there's been so many issues we see in the game where it's like okay so you just can't contest people you can be there especially if you're like a defender or something imagine having a short wingspan as a defender you just can't contest people so try to try to put even if it's like one above minimum try not to print minimum wingspan to be honest with you guys so the last thing i just want to go over once again this is really basic stuff but just be careful when you look at it look at like the differences so if you're gonna make your player at like a shooting guard see okay does it change my player if i make it a point guard because sometimes stuff in the game does stuff like in 19 the position changed your badges so see what does the position change about your ratings or badges but about the badges check the badges check all the new badges i have a list of them that we know about in the description if you guys want to see that check all the new badges see what they do don't just put on the badges you had last year see what all the new badges do examine the badges before you make your build because you can choose your badges this year your wingspan examine what your wingspan does to your build don't just keep it where it at or just change it and make an automatic assumption pay attention to your wingspan pay attention to your height pay attention to your weight every single little thing matters about the build because you can make the exact right archetype or the right attributes but if you mess up your wingspan the whole build can be just thrown out the window and then the takeover you can choose your takeover this year so I heard they changed the takeovers a lot. So don't just see, assume the takeovers are like they are last year. You want to experiment and look at what the takeovers are like so you know what to choose for your takeover. So those are all my suggestions and my tips for making your build in NBA 2K20. I hope I helped you guys. Let me know if I helped you kind of come up with a build you want to make for next year in 2k20 i tried i gave you guys all the info i put my heart into this man but if you guys made it this far in the video appreciate you guys drop a like on the video subscribe if you guys are new and i'll be back soon because if you made this far um before i go i'm gonna be doing a giveaway when the demo drops i'm gonna be doing a giveaway just every single day um between the demo and 2k20 so i'm gonna just give away like an nba 2k21 copy of it like every single day we're gonna be doing it i'm gonna have more info about it soon follow my twitter at power got now but i'll have more for that for you guys later and i am out man I can't be trusting cause people be switching and starting I had to go get me some money, they always was fronting I had to stay up to sign, I never trust up in nine She seeing them drip on the bone, make sure she won't come